So let me now uh, welcome our next speaker. I'm just delighted to, um, to see her again, uh, cross paths again. Dr. Harriet Nemhart uh, is the Dean of the College of Engineering and the Roy J. Carver Professor of Engineering and Professor of Industrial Engineering at the University of Iowa. Um, Harriet, I'm just gonna call you Harriet. I, I, you know, it's just wonderful to have you here. And, uh, you know, without any further ado, I'd like you to launch into sharing with us, uh, you know, your story and how it links with some of these NSF programs. Absolutely. And may I call you Louie, my friend? Is oh, come that on, is? of course. You know how that is. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Well, thank you so much for the warm welcome and good afternoon to one and all. I, I'd like to first uh, express my 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 deep gratitude for the honor of being able to share my views with you during this symposium. Uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Andre Marshall, I think did a wonderful job of laying out some of the mechanisms of these industry funding opportunities through NSF. So I'm glad that he did that. And I can just kind of jump right in to some of the stories that, that I would like to share with you today. I thought it would be interesting for me to share just three stories, three threads that intertwine, no slides, just the stories. The first story is about a hero. The second story is about a teacher. And the third story is about a mentor. And I believe these stories can provide a gateway for discussing some impact of the work of my team and perhaps some future, potential future considerations. So let me start with the three stories. First, first the hero. I recently participated in uh, Dean's Leadership Institute that was sponsored by the Big Ten Academic Alliance where one of the units stepped us through articulating our life narrative as a precursor to a philosophy about authentic leadership. In all, it was a two hour exercise with, with several components, but one of the components asked us to name our heroes and our villains, okay? And after some reflection, I settled on the idea, kind of morphed the exercise a little bit and settled on the idea that the hero of my story is industrial engineering. I've been an industrial engineer since I was seven years old, although I didn't know that that's what it was called until much later. But as a little girl, um, my dad was a pilot. He flew for Eastern Airlines for many years in the uh, 70s and 80s. And we would go to the airport and just watch planes take off and land. And I could identify type of plane, even type of engine. But my curiosities were always, you know, how does the luggage get from the sidewalk to the correct plane? Or how do you determine that the small planes are parked here and the large planes are parked here? These were systems questions. These were always the types of questions that my curiosities have been about. And it's been through industrial engineering, first as an undergraduate student at Arizona State University, then as a graduate student doing my master's and PhD work at the University of Michigan, that I've had amazing opportunities, amazing opportunities to study and train in the field of industrial engineering. So that's my hero story. My, my second story is about the teacher. Like many of the participants here, NSF has been a part of my academic career every step of the way. But a few years ago, for one of the NSF birthdays, 
the NSF Twitter account called on followers to share a tweet to mark the birthday occasion. So I proudly tweeted out that my first NSF award was a $15,000 goalie. That it was small, but validated my drive for applied research in collaboration with industry. And that award, I went back and looked on Fastlane, that, that award was in 1997. And the name, the very name of that program, Grant Opportunities for Academic Liaison with Industry, really resonated with me. I mean, it was, it was very visceral for me at that time that that's, that's who I wanted to be, an academic working in partnership with industry. And my academic journey has involved industry partnerships ever since. Uh, after the goalie, I worked on a phase one and phase two STTR, Small Business Technology Transfer Awards, as well as an IUCRC, which uh, Industry University Collaborations, uh, Collaborative Research Centers. These all provided additional important opportunities for me to collaborate with industry. And I consider this community of industry experts as one of my most important teachers throughout my academic career. From the engineers who helped to build uh, my team's understanding of processes that get products from design to market, to the C-suite executives that helped us to strategize on some of the most pressing challenges facing manufacturing and healthcare. Uh, to work with these folks in industry, to, to grow from their insight, to benefit from the um, acculturation to industry expectations and approaches and just the way things work. These folks collectively have been an amazing teacher. So that's the second story. The third story is about the mentor. Now, in the early phase of my career, mentoring programs for new faculty didn't have the structure that they have now, that they have at many of our institutions now. And unfortunately, mentors at my first home institution, my first home campus, didn't come naturally. But in that mentor gap, stepped NSF. And some of the most robust, insightful conversations about my research plans have been with NSF program directors. And collectively, I think of them as a multifaceted mentor across my career. Perhaps one might say a mentoring network but it has always felt more personal, more of an investment than that, that they really have invested in my success and in my development as a scientist and engineer. And, and I will say this as well, it seems to me that NSF was striving to build inclusive excellence in scholarship through its practices and operations before doing so even had that name or had that framework. I could always count on NSF program directors to help me shape and strengthen my ideas and link me to others in the academic community and engage me on key panel experiences. And I was grateful for this opportunity to provide these remarks for the symposium because perhaps I wasn't even fully cognizant of this value of this mentorship as it unfolded and only in reflecting back on the arc of this support over these three decades do I now see that more clearly. So, so those three stories, the, the hero, the teacher, the mentor, um, 
you know, the, the context matters as well. So I'd like to spend a, a few minutes to draw out a few points on their impact. So as an industrial engineer, uh, my work has always been very interdisciplinary, very multidisciplinary. And the first goalie project that I worked on, my team, which included both industrial engineers, mechanical engineers, and computer scientists, we worked with a mid-sized textile manufacturer. And in particular, they made industrial grade carpeting. Uh, so the type of carpeting that you will see in heavy traffic areas like airports, so really um, heavy grade textiles. And our project developed dynamic control strategies to minimize waste as they were changing over from one product design or textile pattern to another. So this reducing waste is really important because the oils used in textile processing and present in the effluent can produce severe carcinogenic effects in humans. And overall, textile production, so carpet as, as well as towels, sheets, linen, clothing, footwear, textile production overall accounts for 20%, 20% of industrial pollution globally. Now the EPA tracks these pollutants through its toxics release inventory program for US manufacturers, but the global problem to address the environmental issues and to protect the health of workers in this industry remains a challenging one. In the second mechanism that I talked about in the STTR project, um, we switched gears and then worked with, as is the nature of that program, with a small startup that focused on lithography to develop a gel casting process using nanoparticles to enable the production of micro devices with nanoscale features. And in particular, in working with that company, again, a very interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary um, project team with again, mechanical engineers, as well as material scientists and manufacturing engineers in this project, we developed and patented a tiny, tiny forceps, a compliant forceps for minimally invasive surgery so that a biopsy could be done for just a few cells. And this type of minimally invasive surgery uses smaller incisions and just a few stitches in order to reduce the trauma for the patient. And even though this type of surgery isn't appropriate or feasible in, in all cases, I think we can agree that the overall goal of less trauma for patients is, is a very worthy one. And now then from that work, from that work in that manufacturing, so I talked about textile manufacturing with an interest in the health impacts. And then I started working on this compliant mechanism, these surgical instruments. I then worked and led an IUCRC on the Center for Health Organization Transformation. At that time, Penn State had been developing its strategic plan for life sciences and called for uh, leadership in the integration of this manufacturing, engineering, and healthcare delivery space. So I led the site for the CHOT, Center for Health Organization Transformation, and focused on applied research projects in, in healthcare delivery. And in this mechanism, our work engaged some larger companies, some Fortune 500 companies, including AT&T, uh, Siemens, Verizon, as well as several hospitals and academic medical centers. And as, as was previously discussed, the IUCRC has very time-tested 
mechanisms and processes for bridging the industry university collaboration where there is a percolation of the important projects that should go forward uh, in, in any given period. So over the phase of the first phase of CHOT, the science and engineering spanned a wide range from, from fluid mechanics of the blood and air in the human body to projects that worked on modeling and simulation of emergency department patient flow to electronic medical record-based decision-making algorithms. But the goal in working with our partners, with our industry partners and with our healthcare providers was to improve the outcomes for patients as well as for those who were providing care. And I'm so pleased to see the strength that CHOT continues to have today. So, Lastly, with that as some of the background on impact, um, I'd lastly like to make a few connections from this story as well. And the first is that there is the, um, with NSF support, with the innovation that NSF has brought to these mechanisms, through these mechanisms, this has really challenged the culture of academia. I think academia has been slowly evolving to engage more and, and engage better with industry. But I can tell you, you know, a little bit of the other side of the story that when I started the IUCRC work, there were colleagues, senior colleagues who were critical of the work because they deemed it to lack rigor because it was affiliated and in collaboration with industry. But over time, the naysayers quieted when the energy uh, of the IUCRC mechanisms led us to have well over 200 faculty and graduate students involved uh, well over 50 companies, the publications, the problems that were solved, and no doubt the imprimatur of NSF was an important factor in overcoming some of those earliest uh, objections. But the other part of this is that, you know, due to these experiences in engaging with industry as I have across my career, I think I have some unique abilities and insights on connecting with external stakeholders in general, not just industry, but also peers and engineers in practice, as well as students want to hear and understand those real world and industry connections. I think it also gives me a perspective on connecting with junior faculty today as we recruit new faculty. Many of them have an appetite for this sort of industry work, have curiosities or want to have a startup early in their career. And I can let them know that I would be fully supportive of a block of time to immerse or to do a re-immersion in an industry environment, because I really know how those partnerships help to sharpen our focus on key challenges. And then the second connection that I would make and kind of extending from that is in my role here at the University of Iowa as the Dean of Engineering, I really was um, intent to see partnerships as a vibrant part of our strategic plan, one of the pillars of our strategic plan, and not just industry partnerships, but engagement in uh, partnerships um, of, of all sorts, but specifically around industry partnerships we have been working with our chief innovation officer to refine our strategic plan and undertake specific actions to build our capacity with industry. Uh, this college is in a very unique position. It's a small college of engineering, 
a very distinctive, highly capable, highly qualified student body uh, with a tight knit community, but of only about a hundred faculty. Now, how do we leverage that size in partnership with industry and with a medical campus, which is only about a mile away from our main engineering facilities? We have really been intentional around uh, helping engineers, of course, mostly biomedical engineers, but a range of engineers think about pursuing medical degrees. And we've sent students not only to our College of Medicine here, the Carver College of Medicine, but to uh, Northwestern, to Johns Hopkins, to Vanderbilt and, and many others. And a part of the narrative or benefit has been our ability to provide access to real world experiential opportunities as students to students as they go through from undergraduate um, on through the program. Our students also graduate, of course, and um, have had because of these partnerships and our intention to further build partnerships, um, opportunities for very distinctive placements in healthcare industries and other industries as well. So I would offer, um, lastly, some thoughts around some next steps. And here, I believe that there are some potentially empowering questions that we can consider as a community around the economic impact of industry university partnerships. Is there an analytical approach that can be taken to address this question? Or perhaps we can point to a sharp set of narratives on industry university partnerships as we are doing here as demonstrative of this value. But armed with these answers and armed with a deep dive uh, on industry university partnerships, I think there's an opportunity, I, I will even say a need to build more robust RPT, uh, reappointment promotion and tenure systems that recognize and reward these industry partnerships in ways that will help to strengthen the success of our faculty and students. You know, just imagine if one third of our faculty say we're deeply engaged with industry in some of these next level mechanisms and capabilities. You know, NSF has been setting this visionary agenda, particularly in the engineering directorate uh, around these type of mechanisms. I'm very excited as NSF stands up the Directorate for Technology Innovation and Partnership. And it's my understanding that the um, STTR and the i programs will become a part of, of that directorate or at least um, intersect with that directorate. So we definitely see a, a new horizon, a future horizon where these sorts of partnerships are uh, even more important. And I think universities have some work to do to help provide uh, broader leadership and, and support faculty success in, in navigating these new models. So in closing, I'll just say, you know, as many have noted, uh, what we are here for, what engineers are, are placed here on this earth for, I believe, is to solve problems that address the needs of society and the welfare of humanity. My work has largely, as I said, intersected improving human health. And I often reflect on the first lines of a poem by Raja Basu that health is our most impression, I'm sorry, health is our most precious wealth. I hope you agree. No doubt health is the sweetest fruit of our life's tree. So I'd like to take this moment again to express my gratitude to the National Science Foundation for supporting my research and my students certainly uh, for enabling me to solve problems in the health and manufacturing domain, but most significantly for being an organization that I'm very proud to be affiliated with. Thank you.
Harriet, thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, you've brought up a number of things here that I, I hope that we're going to be able to pursue when we go to our discussion session. I hope you'll be able to join us. In particular, um, you know, you see the information that comes on prior things about Pasteur's quadrant and owner, you know, user inspired research, which I think lies in, in your message, right, of that industry university interaction and how NSF has changed academic paradigms. So I, I really hope that you'll be able to join us. We wanna pick up on that later, but I, I'm gonna to need to move on to our next speaker now. Thank you very, very much, Harry. Of course.